and welcome to a new edition of Human Dialogues. I'm Jessica Lockhart, Director of the International Institute of Humanology. As you know, every month we speak about and we talk or, and we work around a certain topic. And the topic this month is beliefs. We wanted to approach this topic from a very specific point of view because many of us have had the chance to live in different countries, we thought it'd be interesting to maybe challenge, identify, work on some of the beliefs related to moving to other countries. Anything and everything having to do with being a refugee or a migrant or even an expatriate. And that's why we have the wonderful, amazing pleasure and honor to have a very special guest with us today. I'm going to be talking to none other than Professor Caroline Makaka. She is the founder and president and also CEO of Ladies of All Nations International and creator of We Are the Change World Movement. Ladies of All Nations International, also known as LOANI, is a champion of diversity. It operates worldwide chiefly to bring nations together under the umbrella of humanity with the ultimate goal to support and uplift the underprivileged in various communities. It is now covering a hundred different countries worldwide, promoting diversity and inclusiveness, covering all aspects of equality and diversity. Their vision is simple, to create a collective, inclusive, engaging platform and celebrate cultures where they can share various aspects of knowledge and information, recognize and use to make our society wholesome, and each, in turn, learn from those uh, from one another. This is an outcome of an innovative partnership between women of all backgrounds and cultures to provide a holistic perspective towards shaping a shared vision and drive change in today's global communities for the better. Professor Makaka has received uncountable recognitions and awards. We could not mention all of them here because then we would have no time for the interview. But let me just mention a couple of them. For example, she was given the US, uh, the US of Aid, the United States of America President Lifetime Volunteer Service, Service Achievement Award. And it was given to her by President Biden and Vice President Harris, none other. And she was also recognized by the United Kingdom House of Parliament by receiving the Women of Excellency Special Recognition Award. So as you can see, oh, this woman has a lot to say about living in other countries, having international communities, and I am sure she's going to not only inspire us, but she's also going to educate us. So let me please welcome Caroline Makaka to Human Dialogues. Caroline, really, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I feel very, very honored. And thank you for introducing me. I'm just so grateful. And thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I mean, if we're going to be talking about beliefs, we could not uh, forget about people who have to migrate or people who choose to move to other countries because more and more people are moving around the world today. And with the terrible circumstances happening in many places in the world nowadays, I expect there's going to be even more people moving around and having to settle in different places that are not their original homes. So if we talk about handling beliefs in our new countries, that is the, the host country where we move into. I know that there's different countries and different cultures, and some countries are easier to settle in than others, but it is also easier for certain people to move and settle in other countries than for some other people. Being a person who's lived in eight different countries already myself, I think I also have a little experience in this field. Caroline, my first question to you would be, have you lived in different countries? Yes, I have. <laughs> I'm originally from Zimbabwe, from Africa, yeah. So I've uh, lived in different countries and I understand the impact of, uh, you know, all the challenges that you face when you move to another country. Yes, I have. 
Mm -hmm. And out of your experience, were some of those countries harder to settle in than others? Was it more difficult for you? Uh, yes, because uh, in Africa, as you know, it's 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 hot, <laughs> and in UK it was like freezing. So uh, it's like it's just like um, we're not used to cold. <laughs> so obviously the weather as well, and also um, you know uh, you're just coming into a new country. There's language barriers and culture shock. There's so many things, the food, you know, because we are used to our own step of food as well and the food and you have to use the train. So there's so many things that we had to adapt into. Yes. Yeah. And what would you say is one of those things that was really, really, really hard for you? See, for example, in my case, I've been a, a foreigner my whole life because I moved already as a child into another country. So I was always a foreigner. So perhaps one of the hardest things for me has been to never feel like I fully belong any place. That's my personal case. What about yours, Caroline? What would you say was really especially hard for you? I think, um, you know, sometimes when you move to another country, uh, it depends with the reason. So obviously, sometimes it's not by choice, but it is by situation. So in my case, um, you know, I lost my parents when I was young. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, my sister, she came here and then obviously she invited me as well. So I had to just make sure that I work hard so that I can take care of my other siblings as well. So it's also adapting to, you know, uh, being uh, someone who know that in my back of in the back of my head I have responsibilities as well. So even uh, like also the weather as well. Like I said before, it was really cold, and then you have to wake up early in the morning, and um, and these are some of the challenges. But at the same time, you also have to understand that. Um, it is an opportunity as well to create a change so that you are able to help not only yourself, but you can also help your own family and communities as well. So for me, I, I saw it as the opportunity for me to make a change in my own life so that I can help my family and my community as well. Yeah. And well, what impact did all that have upon you creating Ladies of All Nations International, because having moved uh, so young and having lived such uh, difficult time, I suppose that that had somehow uh, a push to creating Loani, right? Uh, yes, because I also understand that everyone is the same. And uh, obviously I felt very welcomed in this country. And then there was so much opportunity for me as well. So then I realized that uh, we are all the same. And at the same time, because I lost my parents when I was young, and then I realized that we need each other. We need to support each other. And you need someone that can actually just listen to you. So that supporting system as well, uh, it also helped me to create a sisterhood and just to bring everybody together together that it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. If we just join our hands, we can all come together and support each other and change the world for the better. Yeah. In spite of that, we see that uh, different types of beliefs, like religious beliefs, cultural beliefs, even family beliefs, separate people. And when you move into a country that is a foreign country to you, your own belief system sometimes clashes against the local belief system. How did you handle that? What did you do to somehow ease your integration in the new countries? I think uh, the most important thing is to communicate. And also you have to adapt that each country has their own rules and everybody has have their own beliefs. So we just have to understand each other and more importantly, learn from each other. And that is how we can help each other. So for me, I 
just listen and also I want to learn as well about other cultures as well and that can help me as well because um, by doing that we are also creating a unity so we want to create this unification uh, world where we can all just come together um, you know despite our background where we come from so yeah so for me I just believe that everybody is the same we all have different beliefs, but we can learn from each other by just listening to each other. And then we can also do the culture exchange and help each other through that way. Yes. Uh, I suppose that curiosity and being curious also plays an important role in that. You have to have an interest to integrate, right? Yes, you have to have an interest. And you also have to be someone who is willing to listen and learn without judging anybody. So once you listen, you can understand. But it's and funny. you also learn. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because you then encounter people who say, yeah, but if we all do like this, we're all going to be uniform and the same and we're going to lose ourselves. We're going to lose our identity. What would you tell those people, Caroline? Oh, uh, the thing about you are not losing your identity, but you're actually coming together. It's just like any other person with all different cultures, races, background, but we can just all work together. So it's not about losing your identity. It's about learning and also creating a friendship so that we're able to learn from each other and work together and support each other despite our background and where we come from. Yes, I know that you were recently in the Philippines. You were having one of your big events there, like the one you're planning for Mexico next year. And I know that you mostly started working with women, although now you're working with men as well. Would you say there is a difference in the way women integrate in new cultures versus the way men do it? Have you noticed any differences? Yeah, because women are the, you know, women, we understand there's a nurturing, like the motherhood. So because women, we also understand the importance of uh, uh, responsibilities because obviously, <laughs> you know, you have the baby, you carry the baby for nine months, you're staying at home, we're, you know, in most cases. So we understand, uh, you know, how it is important for us to take care of each other, to take care of the family, so we can understand. So hence why it is important as well, you see, to create a women empowerment, so that we're able to come up with this unification of sisterhood as women, because we understand the importance of taking care of each other, supporting each other, creating a change and helping each other as well, because we understand the importance of, um, you know, uh, res you know, like for me, I grew up in a family, uh, we were um, six girls, one boy. <laughs> Whoa. <Yes. laughs> Yes. But wow. obviously, uh, my mom, obviously, she, she was, you know, my dad, yes, he was taking care of her, but my mother as well, she was uh, working, um, and then she was also supporting us, and then she was also encouraging us to be the role model so that we can all support each other, we can all support our siblings as well, so, yeah. Oh, so cool. I think the mothers can understand more. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the female side, yeah. So, of course, I suppose that my experience as a white woman from the U.S. moving around Europe has very little to do with your experience, maybe as a black woman moving around Europe too and living in different places, or the experience of a refugee who has to leave their home country to uh, ask for asyl asylum some other place. But in spite of all those differences, would you say there is like some basic advice that 
every person who moves to a new country should also listen to or should keep in mind when they move? I think what people should understand like right now is most of the people they are moving on uh, is not because of the choices, but it's because of the situation, like the war. So, and they're now forced to move to another country. So remember, if someone is just moving to another country because of the war, then they lost everything, everything. It's like their history, their life, their identity, everything is gone. So you're just moving in, into another country, just like that. And then the culture shock, you're vulnerable, you're stressed. So it's, there's so many things that you have to take into consideration. So that's why um, most of this, you know, people, they just encourage people to be kind and to understand because you don't understand the situation behind it. So hence why it is very, very important to just sit down and understand the reason behind it and see how can we support each other and come together and that way, this is how we make this world a better place. Yeah, yeah and it, even even those who somehow choose to move, um, those choices might also be fueled by extreme need. You know, you might decide, I'm going to go, I don't know, from one country to another one because... I have no jobs here or because my family is starving or because I have a sexual orientation that is being persecuted here and I fear for my life, even if there's no war. But as soon as we judge those coming into our countries and consider them second level citizens, we are creating horrendous xenophobic uh, relationships and horrendous racism. So mm -hmm. I think that we should all strive to extend respect, basic human respect and decency in every culture in the world. But it's becoming very difficult to do that. I know that uh, your organization is really striving to do that. And from here, I want to congratulate you on the work you're doing and the work of all your members, because I think the world needs much more of this. And I think that uh, people like you, an organization like yours, are really necessary in the world today. I think that we need to start seeing us as human beings before anything else, before the skin color, before the level of culture, before the country of origin, before our gender, before anything else. Because only by seeing one another as equals will we be able to really create societies that are welcoming and nurturing for all. Would you agree? Yes, I agree. And um, I think that's one of our theme in our organization that uh, we create a wonderful world of inclusion where all means all. So when we say all means all, it means everybody is the same and uh, we understand each other. So we are actually trying so hard to bring people together so that they can understand different cultures. So hence why you see, um, you know, last month we went to Philippines. So we also take all those leaders, uh, everyone to go to the country so that they can actually experience the culture themselves. They are actually going and see the, you know, we go and see uh, people from Philippines. We experience the culture through the food, through charity work, through, we even have a night where we wear the Philippine culture cultural dress, everybody dress up as cultural dress. So we want people to experience the culture, not just seeing what people are saying on the news, but for them to be able to go in and understand. And then we also support the charities as well together. So we are creating this unification to show the world that there's kindness, there's love. We can all 
hold our hands and support each other and we can also travel to another country and make the world a better place and hence why we're also going to Mexico so we also want people to experience different culture but also at the same time we are also helping each other so that we can help our own communities but this can only be done when we just join our hands and support each other yeah you see, I remember an anecdote. I was living in, in Moscow, in Russia at the time. And uh, because of the work my husband was doing, we lived in a compound, in a closed, uh, full security environment. Also because in Russia, everything is in Cyrillic. We cannot even read the road signs. And, you know, it was for safety reasons also that we lived there. And... Um, of course, there were groups of uh, expat women and people in the in the vicinity that we used to go out with. We would go out to see some sightseeing places and then maybe have lunch together. And I recall several instances in which we went to a food court because we could find all kinds of food for everyone to enjoy. And I remember being the only woman out of the whole group that ate Russian food. And I remember several women saying, uh, no, I'm not even going to taste that. That's too Russian for me. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, if you've never tasted it, how do you know first that it's too Russian? And second, that you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's also part of cultural beliefs. And that's what we were talking about before. I would ask you then, what would you say are the don't do's for people who move to other countries? We said, yeah, keep being curious, keep an open heart, keep an open mind. But are there certain things you would tell people to try and never do when they move to a new country? I think if uh, people, what they need to understand, if you move to another country, the country has its own rules already. So you have to respect that. So you're moving to a country, you have to follow their rules. So, and, and, you know, and also if you, um, uh, maybe you speak another language, you also have to have the willingness to learn their main language, like English, because that is how you get by. That is how you understand to make life easier for you. So I encourage people that they have to follow their rules and they have to have the willingness to learn as well and understand the culture because they are moving into that country as well. So uh, that's how I encourage people to also, um, you know, just make sure that um, if they are, you know, they don't commit crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Follow the rules, don't commit crime, have the willingness to learn and just be grateful with every situation. Yeah, I would, I would add one thing. Let's see if you agree with me. I, I guess you would. I would encourage people to really mingle with the local population. Yes. Really yes. get to know locals, yeah, not just local. the foreigners. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the learning as well. You're learning about culture. How you learn is through connecting with the local people, understand what is happening. And, 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 you know, that way you will understand more. And also it's part of you learning the language as well. So that way you can communicate with them. So Caroline, I know that you also work with charities all around the world and that you support the underprivileged, as we said before. And I know that Ladies of All Nations International and all the other groups that you work with have a keen interest in supporting people who need it. What can you tell us about this and how is this related to the topic we're discussing today that is cultural beliefs, personal beliefs, and the beliefs of those who move or who receive migrants? Um, I think uh, we are supporting, our main mission is when we come together, we also are uh, not only coming together, but we also supporting the underprivileged communities, uh, which are the vulnerable uh, women and orphans, uh, widows and single parents. So um, when we say all means all, that means that we are bringing in 
all the women um, from all different backgrounds and nationalities. And in our organization, we also have leaders who have skills. So they are also sharing their skills to the vulnerable women who are also in our communities. So those vulnerable women, they can then use their skills to help their own communities for the better. So we all supporting each other in different ways. So we'll, when we say, like again, like I said, all means all, that means everybody is important, but we can also benefit from each other through supporting each other uh, one thing which I always encourage people is that uh, we all have different skills, um, you know, ideas and mind. But the most important thing we should do is to share our skills. So once we share our skills, we can make the world a better place. By sharing your skill, you're going to help someone you're giving them the tool that they can use for the rest of your life. So my uh, my statement is that share your gift to the world that is waiting for a change that we are creating. Because every day we have the opportunity to create a change. But, you know, most of the time people, they don't want to share their gift. But you never know how your gift can change someone else's life. So you can ask yourself every day, what can I do to make this world a better place? It could be five minutes just advising someone, but that five minutes can change their lives. And then they can also transfer their skills to the next generation. And then you can change their the whole generation after generation after generation. So we try to encourage people to come together and support each other and then through our successes and struggles, even if we're celebrating each other's achievement, we also celebrate together. So it's through the successes and struggles, but at the same time, we also hold our hands and help each other um, in our own communities as well. So that's why we travel together, we go into our own communities and then we celebrate and support each other. Yeah. Yes, because at the end when we add, it's not two plus two is four, we multiply really. It's two plus two becomes a million because the repercussions are not only immediate but also long lasting. And I think that that is part of the beauty of the kind of work that you are doing. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Caroline. I know that uh, the people who are going to be watching this interview will be inspired by your wise words. We hope that what you just explained somehow helps people who are either moving to another country, already there, to somehow embrace the new culture, the new people, and allow themselves the experience of getting to know it and really becoming one of them while respecting their own personalities and their own beings. I know that we will meet again. We will continue working together. I know that the work that you are doing as a human being, but also your organizations and all the groups that you support are somehow matched and very similar to the work we're trying to do at the International Institute of Humanology. All is all, we are all one, humanity, humanology, everything should go together hand in hand. So thank you very much for giving us this time and this interview, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Caroline. Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, I really appreciate it. Like you say, human of all nations, so we're all one. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, Thank you very much, everybody. If you liked this interview, don't forget to subscribe. Do send us your comments, your questions. If you have an anecdote to share, contact us and let us know. I am Jessica Lockhart. This is the International Institute of Humanology for our international monthly magazine, Mas Humanos. Have a wonderful time. See you next time. Bye.